Hello and welcome to the original, the only podcast of its kind for the Quantum Grammar Shoot, a podcast that talks about the grammar technology known as Correct Sentence Structure Communication Parsing Syntax Grammar, i.e. Quantum Grammar, and how it relates to everyday life and current events. And I am your host, Colin Jason Knife and Matthew Colin Glass. This is a podcast of opinion where I share my thoughts on a psychological level of how one would use this technology navigating through everyday now space and other related subjects. Hope you enjoy. Hello and welcome to this edition of For the Quantum Grammar Shoot podcast. As you can see, the location in which I am standing is dark. And I find that that is congruent with a lot of individuals out there on the earth today in society, uh, the positions that they, the locations they are standing or not standing in. It can seem very dark, but it doesn't have to be that way. And hopefully this podcast will help shed some light into those dark locations. Enjoy. For myself, one of the major blessings that I've received from learning correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar is the skill to be able to convey my thoughts, my thinking, in terms of facts. This conveyance also, on the flip side, gives me the skill to see others, to see the facts in others' conveyances or the voidance of facts in others' conveyances. I can see what's presumption and assumption and what is not, and it all comes down to volition. So that's going to be the focus of this podcast, if you're perhaps sensitive about certain subjects, uh, get triggered easily, this may not be the podcast for you. Because part of that skill of conveying facts or just conveying the root means of things and what I mean to say, one of the side effects of that seems to be that people who are not used to that feel that I'm being harsh or even rude. But if they were to look at the totality of the way verbal communication is used and even written communication, well, mostly on the internet and comments fields and things like that, but in the verbal communication, they will see that what I'm doing is not rude at all and it's not harsh at all. Harsh pretty much is just an opinion or a perception in that sense. What I'm doing is just simply stating what I mean to say without padding it <clears throat> with any types of uh, modifications or the least amount of modifications that I can possibly produce. So the first thing that I'd like to cover is lately I've been getting an influx of emails from people wanting me to help them write correct sentence structure sentences or documents for their court cases and when they write to me other than a punctuated name they demonstrate absolutely no proof that they have any grasp of the rudiments or basics of correct sentence structure nothing so I'm going to quickly throw this into an analogy or a comparison that would be like you who perhaps you're an English speaker, you suddenly find yourself in deep in the heart of Russia where no one speaks English. But you know someone over there who has a basic understanding of English or maybe they're even an expert in English, I don't know. But they also speak Russian and they're an expert in Russian. But you're not physically near them. You just send them an email and say, hey, you know, I got this court case. I'm in Russia. And could you 
help write my write my letter to the court in Russian? Could you do that for me? That that's almost the exact same thing as someone writing me in plain English asking me to help them with a correct sentence structure case. First of all, how much time do you think it's going to take someone to do that? How much effort? I hope this came across as clear in that if you, an English-speaking person, suddenly finds yourself in the heart of Russia and you have uh, problems with the law or the legal system and you don't speak Russian, you just know how to write your name in Russian, but that's it. You find someone on the internet who knows Russian and also knows English, so you write them an email and you say, hey man, could you please help me with this? Help write my court case in Russian or help me out with this because I don't speak Russian and, and I want I want to uh, do this court case in Russia. How do you, I mean, how do you think that's going to work? It works the same thing as if you're asking me to help you with a court case using correct sentence structure when you have no clue what correct sentence structure is or how to even use it. This is just a, a blunt truth of how it works. That is why in just about every video or podcast, I'll at least make a brief mention that learning the grammar is psychological, 90% psychological, and that in order to do any of this stuff or use any of this stuff in those locations, those dangerous locations, well, I mean, could possibly potentially be dangerous locations, is to learn this stuff yourself. If you want to navigate through the Russian court system, it would probably be a good idea to at least gain a rudimentary closure on the Russian language so that you can at least go in there and handle yourself. Now, I know that doesn't exactly translate into correct sentence structure because when you use correct sentence structure in those locations, they don't use correct sentence structure either. But that's not the point. The point is, if you're going to use correct sentence structure... In those scenarios, you are the judge. You become the authority of that court through flag mechanics, postal mechanics, and grammar mechanics. You are the master of that document, contract, postal vessel court venue. So therefore, if anyone is lacking knowledge with regards to that, it would be contingent upon you to teach them the language, the grammar. And if you don't have that skill, then you don't have any business being in there using correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar. At the least, it will have no effect at all and you'll think that it's just a bunch of BS. At the most, you could wind up in a prison. There are horror stories and things that are easily certifiable of individuals. Well, there's an individual out there right now, as far as I know, he's still in prison, who was certified a federal postal court judge by the individuals who brought correct sentence structure to the public, Colin David Eiffel, Wynn, Colin Miller, and Colin Russell Hyphen J. Colin Gould. They were certified by both of those men as a federal postal court judge, and yet they're in prison for 21 years for paper terrorism or whatever it is. So you definitely have to know what you're doing. And it's highly recommended that you don't rely on someone else. Because if someone connected to David and Russell is doing 21 years in prison, well, that would cause me to hesitate before I rely or even pay value for anyone like that to help me. I would prefer to learn it myself, which is what I've actually done. So therefore, I'm in a position to take full accountability for myself in these scenarios using this grammar. And thus far up to this point, I have been successful. I have not had to step into a foreign vessel and dry dock. I've been able to take care of all of these cases through my postal court. In other words, through my mailbox. And I hope to continue that way. 
because I don't know anyone who enjoys going to court and playing games with men and women in black dresses sitting in boxes it's just not something some people may find it fun or engaging but I don't I find the whole system repugnant and distasteful I prefer to stay as far away from it as possible <laughs> and, it, and it is possible it is possible to do that as I've found over the years so therefore I bring it back to the grammar if you are having these problems, if you are in the middle of a court case, now is probably not the most efficient time to learn correct sentence structure. Especially if you have to learn it under pressure, it's probably not going to work out. It's probably going to be very frustrating. The time to prepare is before these things happen. Or go through whatever you're going through, but at the same time, with the vision of learning correct sentence structure... Uh, to use in the future and of course the future and the past don't exist we just have the now space which continues on and on and on one attribute that I've found extremely useful in having success with quantum grammar is the attribute of consistency to be consistent with what one does with this grammar. To keep a schedule, do what you say you're going to do with regards to when you're going to do it. Um, and do this every single day. Be consistent with it. And you will see, if you look, if you take a glance, well, I don't know myself what it looks like these days because it's been so long since I've actually looked into that sector but if you look at what is known or has been known as the quantum community which was revenued from the Red Thumb Club which they may have changed their name by now but if you look at that those that group of individuals you will see a chaos there you will see a total lack of organization now, of course, I'm assuming because I haven't looked at it, maybe they're more organized now. I don't know. But my experience with them and observing them and, the whole, and one of the main reasons why I never got involved with them is because they're so chaotic and uh, disorganized. And not only that, rude, malicious, and, uh, well, whatever else. I don't want to go too far into the negative with that. I'm just telling you from my personal experience of the way that I was treated by them and their associates. And of course, no one ever takes accountability. They always pass it off to someone else or pass it off to as an appeal to an authority. Well, so-and-so says so. In any case, this there is a marked lack of consistency with their performances and their behaviors and their emotional conditions of state. Mark it. I have literally had emails where someone emailed me who was involved with them and they were very kind and calling me brother and blah, blah, blah. And then when I did not agree to what they wanted me to do, the next email was sent back with cuss words in it calling me names, physical, threatening physical violence to me, my family, threatening to send me to a military prison and this, that, and a third. All in the course of 24 hours. So if someone's mood can swing that far in 24 hours from one side to the next, that is definitely a violation of rule one, rule equal. And that's not the type of individual that I want to contract with. No, thank you. I prefer an even keel. I prefer slow and steady. Because with extreme highs comes extreme lows. And that's just not something that is congruent with my lifestyle and the way that I do things. 
So that is why I say that consistency is the key. Rule one, rule equal stretches across all aspects of one's life if one wishes. I was just listening to a lecture by Manly P. Hall where he talks about, he, he said that people who are suspicious and people who are critical, those types of people cause stress and anxiety in others. And in, in order to navigate and live a stress and anxiety free life, in other words, a life void of stress and anxiety, one must make a conscious effort to not be critical and not be suspicious. Now, I'll leave you to look up Manly P. Hall and his lectures. There's many, many hours of Manly, Manly P. Hall lectures on YouTube that I find very interesting, personally, and very useful. I can learn from anywhere. So I just thought I'd share that with you because I find that that makes a lot of sense to me. Now, some may say that I've been critical in this very podcast, which, from certain perspectives may be true I'm making efforts not to do those things and I think when I look at everything in in, uh, retrospect I feel that I do it a whole lot less than most of those people out there in this community who do things similar to what I do which by the way I still have not seen anyone out there doing what I do I don't see anyone in the public on YouTube, making grammar videos, putting their face and their name in the public, teaching this grammar. And now that I've been doing this for a few years now, I have some guesses as to why that is so. And it's the same thing that I've been telling people in the confidential over the years with teaching that I've found that if you don't have closure on this grammar, of course you're not going to put your face out there. Of course you're not going to teach this to the public because then you would look like a fool because you wouldn't have closure on what you're saying and it would come through it would come through on camera that you're fake that you don't know what you're talking about now it's either that or perhaps those people who know it are trying to hoard this knowledge and charge people huge fees to learn it or you have to take some kind of oath or whatever. I've had that happen to me where there was a certain colored thumb club back in 2017, I think it was, who approached me that asked me to agree to a contract to put the club's interests above my own, which was very interesting. I have this email saved. I have all emails and correspondences on file just in case I ever need to pull them out at any point in time. But I found that very interesting because, of course, the first group that comes to my mind are the Freemasons. They do the same thing, and I've been approached by them as well. But I'm with the avoidance of any affiliation with any group, especially a secret society or, or anything like that, because that's a violation of Rule 1, Rule Equal, and does not is not congruent with my lifestyle. I have nothing against anyone who decides to join these groups, or clubs that's their choice for me it's just not something that's congruent with my lifestyle at this now space juncture in closing what I've found through my navigations using correct sentence structure and also not using correct sentence structure is that the fiction system is relentless at all times it will assail you and try to find cracks in your armor, so to speak. Find chinks in your protection at all times. Psychologically, sometimes physically, whatever. Using fear, coercion. And it comes down to holding a position. Being confident in oneself, one's being, and what one is. Exactly. I know for some people, this involves giving authority over to a higher power. And this sometimes works for them because their volition of 
for lack of a better term, belief, which I realize is a no-contract word, but I'll use it here to convey meaning in a fiction sense, the belief is so strong that it overrides the fiction system. Even though, well, we'll leave it at that. But that it just proves my point that volition is the strongest thing. As they say, what you believe you can achieve, it manifests in performance. Now, when you have certification of the facts using correct sentence structure and you are confident and have the surety of a position as a fact, all your ducks are in a row, that is way stronger because now you are the authority and you immediately establish a geometric level playing field and you invite the other contract parties to come on to the field. 9.9 9.9 times out of 10, they will refuse because they cannot hold that position. And it's the same thing, like uh, I give an example, I think I've already done this in the past, of I invited Jehovah's Witnesses to my domicile one time, a couple years ago. When I was doing experiments with correct sentence structure, they used to leave pamphlets on my porch. So I syntaxed the pamphlet, sent it back to them, and invite, invited them back for a face-to-face meeting. And a senior member and a young, I don't know what you would call him, apprentice came. And the apprentice started talking to me. And immediately I established my position by showing C pass C treaty and explaining what it was. And then I commanded that if they were going to board my vessel, they had to show me similar credentials. So the older gentleman, the senior member, immediately took charge, came forward and showed me his state identification which, okay, so he's an agent of the state. Gotcha. In any case, we had a nice conversation. It was very friendly. I held my position as a fact, as a creator, as a master on the geometric level playing field. They could not maintain their position because they could not show me evidence or proof of their higher power or their position. They could not. And they admitted that they could not. They flat out said to me, well, it takes faith. You have to have faith in something you can't see. Oh, so you have to have faith in an assumption. Gotcha. I said, well, that's not how I navigate. I navigate with proof, with evidence, continues to the evidence. And this is continues to evidence of who I am and my authority. Because authority comes from knowledge and the skill to convey that. They agreed. We shook hands. I said, if you ever want to learn correct sentence structure here, I gave them my card. And they left. And I have never heard from them again. They go to houses beside me and knock on doors, but not to my house. Because they have no position to hold with someone like me. And this, I'm I'm just going to be straightforward about it. Correct sentence structure can be a very solitary endeavor. Because of this type of thing. Because it strips away all of the modifications, all of the padding all of the wordplay and it really just narrows it down to the bone of the matter and that's it the rubber hitting the road that's all there is to say about it really so I hope this straight shooting edition of the podcast which I try to shoot as straight as I can in other podcasts too but this one especially because I wanted to address those individuals who contact me wanting me to do cases quote unquote This is the the reality of the situation. And I hope I've conveyed that clearly. And I hope you would join me for future podcasts. If you would like to schedule a consultation because you have a grammar question or you wish to apply for a confidential correct grammar performance workshop, you can contact me at jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com. Or you can check out my YouTube uh, channel, www.youtube.com forward slash Jason Matthew Glass. Thanks for listening.